and your loving kindness, oh God. Oh, hallelujah. We thank you, Father, for the refreshing of the Holy Ghost here tonight. We thank you, Father, for the refreshing of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father, for the fire of the Holy Ghost. Father, shake this place, Lord, with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Father, make us so hungry, so thirsty, so desperate for you, Father God. Father, that we press in to touch the realms of glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The fire of heaven. The fire of heaven. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, I tell you, if you're hungry, if you're thirsty, the promise is you will be filled. You will be filled up. You will be filled up. You will be filled up. And when you're filled up with the Holy Ghost, when the Holy Ghost fire is burning on the inside of you, when the Holy Ghost fire is burning on the inside of you, <laughs> all that you have need of, all that you have need of is met right there in the fire. <laughs> all the strength you need is right there in the Holy Ghost fire because he just comes and he takes you over and he takes you into a realm that you have not gone before. He lifts you up out of this earthly realm and he takes you over into the realms of glory, into the realms of heaven. He takes you outside of man's ability over into the realms of heaven's ability, into the realms of the ability of the Father, the realms of the ability of the Son, the realms of the ability of the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, by that might and that power of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, all things that you see were created as the Father thought them. And Jesus, the Word, spoke them out into existence, and the Holy Spirit brooded over the waters and performed the work. That same work will be performed in you when you reach out and you say, God, I am hungry. I must be touched again. I'm not satisfied with where I'm at. I've got to go deeper because there's more. There's more, Lord. There's more. And I want more. I'm desperate for more. I'm not satisfied to stay with where I'm at. I don't want to back up. I don't want to back down. I want to move forward in the realms of your glory. Oh, hallelujah. And then they were all in one place in one accord again. And they prayed. <laughs> they were praying. And then suddenly, and then suddenly, the Holy Ghost filled the place. But they were all in one accord. They were all in one place with one mind. They had one purpose. They weren't thinking about anything else. They were desperate for that touch. They were desperate for that outpouring of the Holy Ghost. They were desperate. Amen. And then that was just the first time after Peter and John went and got themselves into some trouble <laughs> just following the Holy Ghost and healed the lame man on their way to pray. They were just going to pray. They were just going about their business to go pray in the temple. They were going about their business and the Holy Ghost said, I got some stuff for you to do. And they saw the lame man that day. Suddenly their eyes were fastened upon the lame man that day. He had been at that gate, beautiful, day after day after day, and they had passed him and they had passed him and they had passed him. But one day he reached out the, his hand to Peter and John, and they said, Silver and gold have we none, but such as I, we have give we thee in the name of Jesus Christ. That same name that we use today by the power of the Holy Ghost that performs the same miracles, that moves the same today as he did yesterday. Because he is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. He is a God that does not change. He is the same God. Oh, hallelujah. And then there, the lame man, he gets up and he goes walking and leaping and praising God and everybody's just coming together and it's just, everybody's just, wow, what's going on? And, and so, you know, of course, the scribes and the Pharisees, they always get jealous when people are looking at somebody besides them. <laughs> so they threaten them and anyway, they go back to their company and this is the point I'm getting to. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 
Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they get back to their own company. <laughs> and they tell them, they report all the things that had happened. And then they begin to pray again. They begin to pray and cry out to God, we need more power, we need more strength. Oh, God, grant us boldness. How many need some boldness in this place tonight to declare the word of the Lord? I need more boldness. I want more. We're coming in the company. We're in the company of the saints tonight. We're coming together. We're gathering up tonight. And we need more boldness. Oh, Father, grant unto us more boldness. More boldness. Stretch forth your hand by your holy child, Jesus. Show forth your glory, O oh God. Show forth your glory, O oh God. Heal, save, deliver, set free. Lord, even right here tonight, heal, save, deliver, and set free by your powerful, mighty glory. Oh, hallelujah. And as they began to pray, again, 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 the place was shaken. It was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They were all filled. How many, how many need some of that? Come on. I need all of it. I need all. I tell you what, this is the abiding place. The abiding place. The abiding place. We're abiding in the vine. That is our purpose in this place. Not to, not to go in and out of the things of the kingdom, but to go on and move forward and take hold. Take hold. Take hold of the things that God is doing. Take hold. Grab hold of them and go deeper. Go deeper. Go deeper. Go deeper. Father wants every person in this place tonight to be touched by the realms of his glory, to be filled up to full, to overflowing, till you cannot contain, you cannot contain what he's put on the inside of you. Until you cannot contain it, until you're full and overflowing, and it's like the rivers of living water flowing out of you to a dry and a thirsty land. Hallelujah. Stir yourself up right now and get hungry. Say, Father, I'm hungry. It's okay if you're not hungry. Let me help you here. Say, God, make me hungry. Forgive me of my complacency. Forgive me of my lethargy. Forgive me, Father. Oh, God, and make me so desperately hungry that I can't stand anything else but pressing in to the realms of your glory, beholding you, seeing you, Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. Come and baptize us in the fire of the Holy Ghost. Oh God, because if we're baptized, then all the needs that we have been looking so to, that like they are so important, Father, they will all be moved out of the way so we can move forward over in the realms of your glory and participate with what heaven's doing. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for your goodness. We thank you, Father, for the glory of heaven. Oh, taste and see. Oh, taste and see. Oh, taste and see. Tonight, don't allow yourself, don't allow yourself to sit by and not touch heaven, to sit by and not taste this glorious realm of glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise you, Father. Oh, praise you, Father. Oh, praise you, Father. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, mighty God. Oh, mighty God. Your glory, Lord. Your glory, Lord. Oh, Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you, oh God, for your goodness and for your mercy. Oh, Father, we thank you for your loving kindness. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father, that you gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers for the work of the ministry, for the perfecting of the saints until we all come in, until we all come in. Oh, Father, your goodness is so great that you, you put all of these gifts into your church to bring everybody along, to bring them in to this glorious realm. 
Oh, praise you, Jesus. We thank you, Father. Oh, praise you, Father. I would love to just have a get beside yourself night tonight, as Pastor Mark's talking about all the time. <laughs> but you know what? Father's so good that, he, that he'll go back to the one, to, to, to just that one that needs, that has a need. And he'll bring, he'll, <laughs> he'll bring them on in <laughs> Ooh, through the preaching of the word, just through his goodness. Oh, Father, we thank you for the fire. Oh, Jesus, we thank you for the fire. We thank you for the fire of the Holy Ghost. Girls, get yourself stirred up. Now, I know you know how to reach in and touch the realms of glory. Now, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> oh, Father. Oh, Father, we thank you, Lord. Just think about, just think about all those good things he's done for you. Why don't you just take a moment and just go back to that moment that he touched you with the realms of his glory and he brought you out of darkness into his wonderful, glorious light. Why don't you just take a moment about and think about what Jesus did for you when he brought you out of bondage. He brought you out of bondage. He brought you out of bondage. <laughs> He brought you out of bondage over into liberty. Liberty. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Ooh, Jesus. Oh, oh, what a glorious day when he washed my sins away. Oh, hallelujah. When he set me free. When he set me free. Oh, when he forgave me for all the iniquity, he pardoned me for all my sins. Oh, what a glorious day. Oh, how wonderful when Jesus, when Jesus, when Jesus. Now, I tell you what, when you think about, when you think about that moment that Jesus came in and he cleansed you from all your sins and that transformation took place at that very moment and that whole burden was lifted off of you and you felt like you had been scrubbed on the inside, <laughs> Washed clean and white. That ought to launch you over into the realms of glory to where you can't contain yourself. Nobody should be able to sit here and contain themselves when they think about that glory. That glorious, that glorious moment of transformation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and, and it's to, from that point... From that point, he said, from glory to glory to glory, by revelation of his glory, by the outpouring of his spirit, he said more, 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 <laughs> not less, <clears throat> not backing up, but moving forward, not backing up, but moving forward, not backing up, but moving forward, hallelujah, praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, glory to your name, Lord Jesus. The fire of heaven. The fire of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Maybe we should start with altar call first. <laughs> Woo! Get people touched by the realms of glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, fire. The fire of heaven. The fire of heaven in this place, oh God. The fire of heaven in this place. People, we didn't come here tonight to sleep through service. <laughs> to sit down because we're tired. We came here tonight to move on over into the realms of glory and be touched, be touched by the power of his Holy Ghost. Just one touch, just one touch, just one touch and you're never the same. But you know what? Once you're never the same, you've got to have more. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Mm. Sweet Jesus. Well, I'm excited. Hallelujah. <laughs> Ooh. And this is, this, this, is how, this is how you go deeper. You come together. <laughs> you come together. And wherever we come together, there's Jesus. 
the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost show up. <laughs> Where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of you. There I am. There I am. He said, I'm there. I'm there. He's here. He's here. He's right here. Woo! Hallelujah. <laughs> Where two or three are gathered in his name, he's here. He's here right here. Right here. Right here. Reach out and touch him. Just reach out and touch him. <laughs> Ooh, Jesus. Oh, he came that our joy might be fulfilled in him. That our joy might be full. That we might be full with the joy of heaven. Full to overflowing. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. I tell you people, I am desperate to get a little closer to God. To get right up in his face to behold him to see him i'm not satisfied i'm not satisfied i am not satisfied with where i'm at i must have more of him i must know him i must behold him i must see him everything that he is all of his desires I want fulfilled in my life. And that comes by the Holy Ghost. And he breathed on them. He breathed on them. And he said, receive. That simply, receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. <laughs> well, praise you, Father. Thank you, guys. That was just <laughs> wonderful, glorious worship. We had a wonderful. <laughs> Ooh, Jesus. Oh, Father, 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 your glory, your glory, your glory, your glory. <laughs> Oh. oh, praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely, 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 surely the presence of the Lord is right here. It's his promise. It's what the word says. He's in the midst of his church, walking around. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> oh, praise you, Jesus. <laughs> Father, we just want to follow you. We want to do what you're doing. We want to say what you're saying. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Well, I tell you, I know the Lord wants to bring some people along tonight. We have tasted and seen how good the Lord is, and we want to go deeper. And it's being touched by the realms of his glory. It's just being touched by the realms of his glory. It's an understanding imparted to us and then being touched. But Jesus, he, <laughs> he came and he ministered to the need of the people. And we want to minister by the Holy Ghost to the need of every person in the place. The glory of the Lord is in this place. The fire of God is in this place. We could just get raptured over. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. But uh, <laughs> we'll get raptured over into the Word. Amen. The hearing of the Word brings faith. Faith comes by hearing and the hearing of the Word. 
Hallelujah. So we want people's faith to be built up. We want people to be. We have. Hallelujah. I think so. That's what I feel. <laughs> Woo, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Sound alike to me. <laughs> <Woo! laughs> yes, Lord. <laughs> Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Woo, that's it. Sounds like a good plan to me. I mean, we are so close. We are so on the verge of the coming of the Lord that we want to be caught up in the realms of the glory of heaven when he comes. Hallelujah. We don't want to be sitting back on the back row going to sleep or nothing. Right? We don't want to be going to sleep <laughs> sitting on the back row when Jesus comes. Because I tell you, we live in a day and a time that it is so ripe. It is so ripe. Do I need to take a different microphone? Is, this, is, is it this microphone that's doing the grand finale? Okay. Oh, hallelujah. It is so ripe. The day is so ripe. We see as we see the day approaching. I see the day approaching. Oh, hallelujah. I tell you what, you turn on the news. I like the news now. Because you turn on the news. Of course, I watch Christian news. CBN, Christian Broadcast network or whatever it is but anyway you hear you hear the word of God being fulfilled in our very ears you hear and see the ten toes struggling and becoming being able to where they can be formed into that alliance oh, you, you just see you see all the trouble in Egypt and the saint nobody can hear can you hear me I'm getting signals over here <laughs> oh, hallelujah. You see the end time approaching. You see that day, that day, that glorious day that we have been longing and we've been waiting for. You see that day approaching. And I tell you what, we're just going to go there and we're going to talk just a little bit about the day. Are you ready for that day? When he comes, will he find you sleeping or will he find you awake? and ready to behold him face to face. Will you be raptured up and caught up to meet him in the clouds of glory? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you walking even as he walked? He that says that he is his ought to walk also even as he walked. Hallelujah. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Let's go over into Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians, chapter 4. <laughs> oh, Jesus. You know, if Jesus was not to come for another hundred years, there's people in this place that, that could, could go and meet Jesus tomorrow. Tonight could be their last night on this planet Earth. We want to know that we're ready to meet him face to face. We want to know that there is no deception. There is nothing that keeps us outside of the realms of his glory. There is nothing that we're allowing to hold us back in this earth. But we're living out the word of God. We're living epistles written and read of all men. Do you look like the Word of God? Do you act like the Word of God? Do you talk like the Word of God? Most importantly, is it written on your heart? Because you have hidden the Word of God in your heart. Because you have given yourself, <laughs> oh, hallelujah, to His Word. Have you do you study to show yourself approved? A, a workman unto God rightly dividing the word of truth? Do you study the word? Do you know? A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We don't want to be ashamed. We want to be able 
to speak the word of God. When someone asks us, we want it to come up like a river. And when somebody don't ask us, we want it to come up like a river. Hallelujah. Well, um, somebody posted something about, oh, it was about this uh, guy that was in Missouri preaching on the streets, and the police keep arresting him. And he, he just keeps going back. And he went back, and this time they compensated, skated his equipment, and, you know, he's followed the letter of the law, not doing anything wrong. He checked it all out to make sure he was doing it all right, and they keep arresting him. And so they showed the clip. I saw that clip, and um, they arrested him, and they just they didn't have any reason. They just said, disturbing the peace. And he said, but I'm following the law, but, you know, we don't care. We're arresting you. And so they took, like, three of them to jail with them. And so, I mean, I mean that got me stirred up. I'm like, I miss being out on the street. I told David, I'm like, let's go get a megaphone. <laughs> let's get back out there on the streets because we, we haven't been out on the streets as much as we did when we were younger. And, you know, David, David my husband and my dad, they'd go to jail every weekend for preaching on the streets. <laughs> and uh, they would go to jail and they'd do all this stuff and then they would be there for a couple of hours and... Um, me and my, I'd take the younger kids all together and we had a, a little program where we kind of slipped off to the side, so, and we got taken home while they all went to jail. And then they would um, release them that sometime that night, and then on Monday morning, they'd be in court and see the judge. Hi, judge, how you doing? I see you, and judge is like, I see you, pastor, doing a great job. Keep up the good work. See you next Monday. <laughs> And so the weekend, the weekend my husband got arrested every weekend. But it wasn't for doing something bad. It was for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, because, you know, just somebody complains and the police come out there and they go beyond what their rights are. And they try to infringe upon the rights of the freedom to preach the gospel. Well, we just got to keep pressing that battle to the gate because we live in a time where our rights are being taken away from us more and more. And having a freedom to preach the gospel is being taken away from us outside of being able to be in the church to preach the gospel. Thankfully, we, we, we still have that one. But uh, we want to press this. We want to press this. We want to hold on to what belongs to us. We want to hold on to the liberty that we have in the United States of America. People, we do not want to be sleeping. We do not want to sleep and let the liberty of the United States be taken away because there's too few righteous and holy people standing in the gap. We want to raise up and gather up the army, bring in the lost, turn the battle to the gate. Hallelujah. We want to be those people. Amen. Don't you be quiet on me tonight. I can't stand it. I'll start yelling. I better have some amen corner tonight. No going to sleep. You know, I tell you what, we got this extra microphone up here, and I can have them turn it on, and I'll just, you know, maybe I'll just walk up to some person in the middle of my sermon, and I'll just let you start praying in the Holy Ghost. We'll just see where you're at. We're praying, praying in English by the Spirit. We just keep everybody on fire, ready, ready, ready to go, ready to go. Hallelujah. We don't want anybody found sleeping. I've come here to stir you up tonight. i come here to stir you up tonight. Oh, hallelujah. So uh, if putting the microphone in front of you helps just to get ready, just get ready. I find somebody that starts to doze off. I wouldn't do that if I was you tonight. Because get ready, I'm going to get this microphone. And we're going to ask about that hope and calling on the inside of you. <laughs> oh, praise you, Jesus. Oh, we're just going to have a good time in the Holy Ghost. But we're going to look over here. We want to get stirred up, though, about reaching the lost, about holding our freedoms. <laughs> don't be afraid of going to jail. I mean, they don't have judges here like they did. Then all that was in Mississippi, and that's in the Bible Belt. And the judge was, you know, hallelujah, praise God, we'll see you next week, pastor. But I tell you what, God will take care of you. He will take care of you. They go to jail in China all the time for preaching the gospel, and they're mean over there. They're cruel. They get tortured for Jesus. 
Well, we're supposed to get excited about that. That we are accounted worthy to suffer for his name. So don't be afraid. Fear not. He's with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If they hated him, they're going to hate us also. <laughs> he prepared us for that. He said if they would have liked me, they would like you, but they didn't like me and they ain't going to like you either. But that's okay. He said go anyway. He said preach the gospel anyway. He didn't say if they don't like you, be quiet and hold on. And, and just, you know, go in the flow, get in the mix. Don't, you know, don't, don't look like you're uh, a neon sign. No, he said, be a neon, neon sign. He said, be the light of the world yeah. for me. If I'm in you, you are the light, he said. You are the light of the world, a city set upon a hill. All the glory, the explosive glory, come on. All the explosive glory of heaven lives on the inside of us. Hallelujah. That is what he's done. That is what he's done for us. We are not going to be lulled to sleep, not the abiding place, because we abide in the vine. And he abides in us. If we abide in him, he abides in us. And then, therefore, the glory's revealed. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, I'm going to try to get over here to Thessalonians. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <clears throat> Praise you, Father. Well, you know what? You may not have all day long to put into the gospel because you into the word of God because you've got to go to work. And so maybe you can't read the word and then get on your knees and pray and read the word and get on your knees and pray and read the word and get on your knees and pray. Maybe you can't do that all day long. But you know what? You have the evenings. You can set aside your little coffee break or whatever thing that you have that distracts you. You can take Saturday and you can say, Jesus, I have to give seven days a week or five days a week to, uh, to work. And then I, I go to church on Sunday. But on Saturday, I can take some time to get raptured on over in the glory of my personal fellowship with you. And in the evenings, every day, take that time to gaze upon the glorious word of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Every morning, get in a little bit while you're rushing out the door. Get a hold of the glory. You know what? You can pack you some lunch the night before and a little snack for breakfast. You can get into the word and you can take that breakfast with you in the car. And pray in the Holy Ghost in the car. And if you can't get the breakfast ate because you're praying in the Holy Ghost too much in the car, you can eat it when you get into work somehow if you need to. But I tell you what, you'll get so raptured up. up I, you know, I pray in the mornings. And you can ask my husband. I'll get to praying and fellowship with the Lord. And I forget about breakfast. I forget about eating breakfast so many times. Because I just need him. I'm desperate for him. I must know him and behold him. There, there's more and I must have it. I haven't got to that place where I, I, I'm standing before him yet. So until I stand before him, there's more. And I have to press in for that more. I have to press in for that. I must have him. I must behold him in his beauty and in his glory. Oh, Hallelujah. That we might know him and the fellowship of his suffering. That we might be conformed <laughs> to his image. <laughs> you know, that is glorious. His image. The likeness of Jesus. The likeness of Jesus. When that revelation hits you of how glorious that suffering, that suffering with him that we might behold him, brings us that every trial you go through, every bit of suffering you go through, brings you on over into a deeper realm of glory. Had you not gone through that, had you not gone through the valley, had you not gone through the tough time, and had to depend upon him in that moment, you would not know him like you do. I think of the times that... You know, and, and one, one time that's very dear to me was the passing of my mother when she went to behold Jesus. Well, it was wonderful for her. And she was all excited about it, but I wasn't too excited about it. And because um, 
more than anything, you know, I prepared myself as much as I knew how to prepare myself for the passing of my mother. I loved my mother. I talked to my mother every day. My mother was a champion in the faith. She held such authority and power upon this earth through her prayers and through her, her walk with God and her testimony of Jesus Christ. She held such a power and authority on this earth. And when she passed away, I felt it on the inside of me. I was there. I didn't leave her when it was getting close to that time of her going. And I was there the moment she was slipping over into eternity. The moment that Jesus met her and took her on over into heaven, I was there. And I was jumping up and down, and I was so excited. I'm like, Mama, tell Jesus how long for me! (laughs) And I mean, not like I couldn't tell Jesus hello, but she was going to see him face to face. And so I was excited, but I did not, and I was not prepared for the void that I would experience when that mighty woman of God left this earth and went up into heaven. I wasn't prepared for that. It was like a big hole was blown in my stomach. And I mean, I trust the Lord. I don't get over, I'm not getting over into grieving, and I'm not getting over into sorrow and and, and death, but I felt this big void. And literally, it felt like a hole in my stomach. And it was one of the most intense things I ever experienced. There's other intense things that I've experienced, and I I learned through those things a closer walk with Jesus. But as I went home about 3 o'clock in the morning and I lay in bed, I said, Father, this is void. There's this lack, you know, I, you know, because I like walking in the peace that passes all understanding. I, I like staying right there where the peace that passes all understanding rules my heart, my thoughts, my emotions. And um, so I'm laying in bed, and I'm like, Lord, here, there, there's this lack of peace. I feel this void. And then all of a sudden I said, Holy Spirit, (laughs) you are the comforter. You are the one that comes and comforts us. Now, Holy Spirit, I need you to come and to comfort me (laughs) right here, right now. And instantly, instantly, the very moment I spoke it out and I called upon him, that void just closed up. And the peace and the joy and the glory of heaven came on me like I had never experienced it before in my entire life. Because I did not choose to stay in the situation I was. I did not want to go into grief, into sorrow, into mourning. But I looked to the word of God and it said the Holy Spirit would come and be our paraclete. That he would show us Jesus. That he would comfort us. And I was in the time and in the need of comfort. And he came. And I got to experience the Holy Spirit in a way that I had never experienced him before. And it was glorious. I was so excited. It was wonderful. I didn't have to mourn and be sorrowful that my mother went to meet the Lord and Savior, the King of Kings, the one that she loved and served all of her life. I did not have to be sorry about that. And so the next day, I go and I meet my sisters and the family all at the house. And of course, they're all upset. Except for my older brother. Of course, he wasn't, you know, he he didn't even come meet us. He was about busy doing the the, uh, Pastor Mark. He was busy uh, doing kingdom business. He let us take care of all the stuff. And so, Hallelujah. I tell you, when I get to talking about things Jesus did, it's all I can do to stand up. <laughs> that was a glorious night. I tell you what. I had such a time of fellowship with the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and then I went to sleep and slept sweet, peaceful sleep. And when you get to talking about it, you just want to <laughs> go up into that realm and stay there. But anyway, oh, <laughs> you know, when you get sad and sorrowful, if things start going wrong, if you don't think it's going right, just start thinking about what Jesus did for you. Just begin to think about the time he touched you and launch right back over into that glory of where he touched you. 
Go there and stay there. Hallelujah. <laughs> and so anyway, the next day, <laughs> I, uh, I met up with my sisters and my brother and everybody. I'm like, and they were all upset. And I'm like, you do not have to grieve. You do not have to be in sorrow and sadness. I go, all you have to do, that's what the Holy Ghost is about, and all you have to do is say, Holy Spirit, come and comfort me. Now, if you choose to grieve, you can grieve if you want to, if that makes you feel better. I think, more, you know, the big thing is people like to feel sorry for themselves. <laughs> oh, and so they get, they, I don't know why they enjoy that when they can have the Holy Ghost. <laughs> oh. It's absolutely beyond me. Why? <laughs> oh, he's so good. He's so good. Just think about what he's done for you. Just think about it. I can't help but to keep talking about that because <laughs> he wants you to experience what he's already done and realize to know that you can go to a deeper place in him. Not get stuck over in something that would distract you from his presence, from his glory. But to think about who he is and what he's done and stay there. I praise you, Jesus. So what was I saying about my sister? Well, anyway, I had a wonderful time. And I, I, it, was, it, it was glorious. And, you know, I just told him, I said, look, mom's having a wonderful time. I don't know why you're crying. She told you not to. She said, she said I, when you, when, if Jesus comes for me by the way of the grave, she goes, there better not be one person cry. She said, you hear me? She goes, I want everybody to have a shout down, Holy Ghost revival service rejoicing because I'm with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I'm walking on streets of gold. I'm in my reward that I have lived for. And don't you ever cry for me. <laughs> and she's having a real good time. She's been there a few minutes. Ah, worshiping Jesus. <laughs> oh, I tried to raise her from the dead. I didn't try too hard because I knew good and well she didn't want to come back, but I thought, well, you know, maybe. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> you know, when the, my niece died, she was little. Her life had just begun. I don't see her here tonight. But we, we had to raise her up. We couldn't leave her there. God's glory had to be seen. God's that was all about God's glory being manifested. So I don't know how long she was dead. It's for a, a good while. And I've shared that testimony with most people here tonight. But, you know, I'm sitting in church, and my sister's got her three-month-old baby way in the back, and she's feeding her. And all of a sudden, I hear the Lord speak to me, get up and run out of church. Well, that makes sense, you know, being a pastor's daughter. And I tell you, being a pastor's daughter, we had to behave ourselves in the house of God. Or we heard about it. And everybody, the neighbors could hear us when we got home. There was a way that we had to behave, and we better behave in the house of God because that was the house of God. Hallelujah. Good training up by my mother and my father. But anyway, I got up and I ran that time. I was disobedient to the rules, and I followed the Holy Spirit. And as I ran out the back of the auditorium, my sister comes running around the corner and meets me just coming into the service with her baby that was like a limp rag. She was just totally, there was no movement in her body. She was just as limp as, as a person could be. And um, I grabbed the baby, and it's just like I did some things, like I stuck my finger down a three-month-old baby's throat to see if there was anything, you know, like what is she going to swallow? She can't even crawl. She didn't get a marble or anything. But I, the reason I did that is so when we testified of God's glory to the doctors, they said there was no gagging reflex. I said there was none, nothing. She did not move. There was no response. 
And they and so that was proof. That ended up being proof that she had passed. She was dead. And so, you know, because I'm like, why in the world am I sticking my finger down this baby's throat? But we begin to pray. I begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. And, you know, her mom's just standing there, you know, as a mom would be. And we begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. And Amanda is 21 years old now. Hallelujah. Jesus brought her back. That is the God we serve. That is our living Savior. <laughs> oh, and you want to see? Well, I'm excited. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I tell you, I could stand here tonight and I could tell you miracle after miracle after miracle. How we have lived our life seeing miracle after miracle. How we've seen people get up out of wheelchairs and walk. How we've seen the blind eyes open and the deaf ears healed. And they begin to hear one miracle after another. Our entire life has been a miracle. My mother was raised up off of her deathbed. God has healed me so many times. It's countless. And so many of you being a part of this church and hearing the word of God have been healed from things that you, some, some people sitting here tonight might not be here tonight had it not been for the miracle power of the living Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We serve a living Savior. Praise you, Jesus. Well, uh, back on to the topic of, <laughs> if I can, <laughs> First Thessalonians. I want to go over here because he could come at any moment. Are you ready? Are you ready to meet him? Are you ready to behold him? Is everything in your life set in order to where seeing and beholding him? Tonight, you're ready to go. Right now, you're ready to see Jesus. You haven't held on to your own life. You deny yourself. Every day you pick up your cross and you follow Jesus. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Let's start with verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep that you sorry, sorrow not even as others which have no hope. See, my mom had hope. So I, it says right here in the scripture, sorrow not for those that are asleep. <laughs> her body's sleeping, but I tell you what, her soul and who she is is dancing around the throne room. She's having a wonderful time with all the saints in God. She's having a glorious time. Hallelujah. This body is just... The temporal part, the soul is the eternal part. It steps outside of this body and it looks exactly like this body and it gets raptured on, on up into heaven with the Father if this body is, it, it was to go by the way of the grave. We keep on living. We're eternal souls. And we keep on living for eternity. This soul will never die. It will spend eternity somewhere. Somewhere. You can, you can uh, ask... Uh, the rich man and Lazarus about that. There was the rich man. And in this life, he was arrayed with royal robes and he, was, he had everything that he, he needed. He was blessed. And then there was Lazarus that sat at the gate who begged for crumbs from his table. He had sores all over his body. He was miserable and in torment. And he had sores all over his body. And... He, he just begged just for the crumbs from the rich man's table. And it came to pass in a very short while that Lazarus and the rich man both died. And they lifted up their eyes in eternity. And this is before Jesus was the resurrection and the life. And so you went to Upper Sheo, to Abraham's bosom, and the rich man could see Lazarus afar off in Abraham's bosom. And he, when he opened his eyes, when the rich man opened his eyes, he was in hell, fire, when he opened his eyes. And he said, seeing Lazarus afar off, he said, Father Abraham, send Lazarus that he may dip his hand in water and put a drop upon my tongue to cool my tongue. 
for I'm tormented in these flames. And the Lord said to the rich man, you had all of these things on the earth and in your lifetime. And basically, he didn't care about the poor and the needy. He was caught up in the cares, the riches, and the pleasures of this earth. And he said, now, eh, now you were tormented in the flames, but now it, Lazarus is in his reward. I tell you what, I'd rather have the rough life here that is so, so temporal and have eternal life with Jesus Christ because it's forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And it can either be glorious or it can be hell, literally hell, hell fire for all eternity, forever and ever and ever in a place of torment. Every one of us, need to search out our salvation with fear and trembling and know that he is an awesome God, a God of love and mercy, but one to be feared, one that you should believe and know that what he says he means. And you can't know that what he says he means if you don't know his word. And so it is so imperative for you to know because you are dealing with your eternal life. Are you ready to slip over into eternity now? Are you ready to stand before the Almighty, the creator of all things, and be judged for the deeds that are in your body? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we're talking about the rapture here, and it's supposed to be exciting. <laughs> because it's the moment we behold him and we see him face to face forever and ever and ever we will be with him. In verse 14, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, all you got to do is believe with your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. That's it. You will be saved. And then you follow on to know the Lord. And believe that Jesus died and rose again. Even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. My mama's coming up out of that grave. Grandma and grandpa's coming up out of that grave. You know, I thank God for the graveyards with the tombstones. You notice that the ones that stand upright and even the writings on those that are down, they're pointed to the eastern sky because Jesus will split that eastern sky and it's for a testimony, a memorial that they're ready to go and meet Jesus. They're ready to come up out of that grave. It's pointed to the eastern sky in anticipation for that moment that Jesus splits that eastern sky waiting to hear that trumpet, that shout of the archangel. For the Lord himself, I'm going to read it again. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and Remain and ready. And I'm not adding to the word of God. I'm just putting another scripture, in, injecting another scripture in there. Shall be caught up together 
with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now this is supposed to be exciting to everybody. There shouldn't be anybody squirming in their seats because they're worried about it. But if you don't know Jesus, your seat might be getting a little hot. You might be feeling a little close to hell right now because that could be what's awaiting you, and we don't want that to be what's awaiting you. You people out there that are watching by the web, you want to know that you're living for him and that everything's well with your soul. My mom always says that, is it well with your soul? Is it well with your soul? Are you ready to meet him? You choose the situation that you're in. God gave every man a free will, and he will not force his will upon any man, but he bids everyone to come. He bids you come. He bids you come. Come and live. Come unto eternal life and live. Thank you, Jesus. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're just going to go on here. But of the times and the seasons, seeing the Holy Spirit led me in this direction and speaking about some of these things, we're going to go on and we're going to read this in, in chapter 5. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, sudden destruction shall come upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape but ye, brethren, are not in darkness. Amen. Amen. Is the light shining in you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The light every moment shining brightly in you. That the day should come and overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep. Let us not sleep. That means that we should look like we're saved all the time, people. We should not look like we've been ran over with a Mack truck <laughs> and have sorrow and sorrowfulness of our heart. But we should live in the joy and in the glory and the realms of heaven because we know that we are redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All, you know, if, if you're serving Jesus and, you're allow, and, and, and the spirit of depression has come against you and sadness and sorrow has come against you, there's only one thing you need to do. And everybody can do it. Open your mouth. Amen. I see a mouth on every person in this place. I don't see anybody in this place that was born without a mouth. Open your mouth and begin to praise him and to begin to worship him and worship and praise your way right out of your troubles. Thank him for what he has done for you. And if you've got a bad situation going on, you take a hold of that thing by faith and you move it right on over into the realms of God. You move it right on over into the realms of glory. You see God's purposes and his plans manifested in that situation. And it's by faith, not by you getting upset about it. It's by moving in faith, living out the word. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Turn with me over to Colossians. Chapter 3. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. If you are risen with Christ, we want to be risen with him now so we can be caught away with him very soon. And it's, it's going to be very soon. Soon and very soon. Very, very soon we will see the king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. 
Set your affections on things above and not on things of this earth. Set your affections, your emotions, your thoughts, your mind, your heart, your soul. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength. Set your affections on things above and not on things of this earth. For you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. If your affections and your emotions are set on heavenly things, if that is where you're at, if you love him with all that is within you, then when he shall appear, you will appear with him in his glory. In his glory. But you know, the Lord, and I'm going to change here because the Lord has talked to me about people's mind. The mind is the place where all the thoughts and the imaginations roam around. The mind is the place where the enemy will breathe out his threatenings and his lies and he'll try to put his thoughts and people don't know how to guard themselves from their thoughts and how to gird up the loins of their mind. That's in uh, 1 Peter 1. I'd have to go there and look. But anyway, girding up the loins of their mind. They don't know how to watch, to put a watch there. In the mind, the thoughts... Are they on heavenly things? Are you thinking heavenly things? Is that where your mind's at? Is your mind full of the word of God? Is, is he your habitation? Is he your meditation? You know, in Psalms chapter 1, it says, Blessed in the, is the man that walketh not in the counsel. I'm going to read it just because I want to make sure that I quote it right. Blessed is the man. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in it he does meditate day and night. That means always the thoughts that are going on in your mind. They're the thoughts of heavenly things. It's the word of God ruling your thoughts and your mind. All day long and all night long. So then you say, well, I get thoughts come into my mind and they're not exactly the word of God and they don't line up with the word of God. Then what we're to do with that is we're to take captive those thoughts. But I want to read a few scriptures and um, just follow along with me if you can turn to them. But um, if not, I'm going to go through them fairly quickly. First Chronicles 28.9. And the Lord's talking to Solomon here, or David's talking to Solomon, says, And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts and understanding, all the iman imaginations of the thoughts. The Lord searches the imaginations of the thoughts. Imaginations is one thing you have to watch out for. You, people encourage imagination. Well, we got to be careful with encourage imagination because it says that our thoughts are to meditate upon him in his law day and night. And we don't want imagination to get weird, you know. Somebody sent me a thing about... Um, there was a, 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 this Christian, I guess, psychologist or something he was. And they were talking about the little friend, uh, the little, this little kid, he has a little imaginary friend. And the mom's got to set a place at the table for the friend and, you know, lay out his pajamas at night and all this kind of stuff. And, and the Christian psychologist 
was saying, oh, this is so good, imagination, I'm so excited, you know, the, told the mom, said, don't worry about it, it's so good to see imagination in children today. And I'm just like, what? Don't take Christian out of, out of your title there, please. Because I'm like, now let me help you here. I've worked in the deliverance tent enough. I've brought people through deliverance and cast out enough demons to know when a demon needs to get cast out. Somebody's done brought some garbage around that child, and that child's got some serious demonic influence going on, and there needs to be some Holy Ghost praying instead of supposedly God's people telling this woman that is seeking help that this is a good thing for her child to have this crazy imagination. And then the people of God just drink it right on up. Oh, yeah, he's a Christian. He said it was good, so it's all good. I'm just like, that's boo-hoo. Don't send me that garbage. Somebody sent me that garbage to ask me my opinion on that. I, you know, I was like, are you kidding me? Don't even say you listen to Pastor Mark or in his, and in his church and know things about God and even come under such stupidity. Imaginations have to be girded up. We gird up the loins of our mind. We're putting on Christ Jesus. We're putting him on. So where was I at with Solomon? And serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searcheth all hearts and understands all the imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off. So you want your thoughts and your imaginations to line up with the word of God into obedience with the word of God. That's what you want to do with your imaginations because in the thought life is where everything gets started. Like I said the other night, <clears throat> people don't go and suddenly fall into a place of adultery. Just they tripped and stumbled in it and suddenly they were there. They get themselves into the situations they're in because it starts with a pattern of thinking. And that thinking, that wrong thinking, that they don't gird up, that they don't bring those thoughts into captivity because Satan breathed evil thoughts into Jesus' mind. Satan spoke. He took the word of God and he twisted it and, and tried to pervert it and give it to the Son of God. Sometimes, I mean, you know, that's pretty stupid. But anyway, he tried it with the Son of God. He's going to try it with you. So we have clear instruction in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And those that don't know this, this instruction, you need to write it down and you need to post it. It's 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh... We do not war after the flesh. Though we're in this human body, our battle is not against flesh and blood. For the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal. But let me tell you what they are. They are mighty. They are powerful. You know why? Because we got the name of Jesus. And at the name of Jesus, every power of darkness must fall subject to what we say when we take the name of Jesus and he's on our side. We've painted that blood upon our doorpost. Satan trembles when we speak. He has to listen. Because you have power and authority in the name of Jesus. When he's on the inside of you, Satan has to flee. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds and to casting out devils. Casting down imaginations. So what do you do with imaginations? Cast them down. There are some people that need to get a hold of this because it's casting down a spirit of fear that comes against you, an intimidation. It's casting down those thoughts that the enemy will say... 
you're going to be sick with this or, you know, everything's just going to fall apart. You're, you're, you, you, you know, you're going to lose all your money or, you know, the police is for sure to stop me now or what, you know, just whatever. All these thoughts come in your mind. You, you bind those things. You don't just go along with the flow and just go, I knew the police was going to pull me over. Why didn't you bind it? If that thought came into your mind, bind it. Take dominion over it. You hear Father speak and say, give you a warning of something's going to happen. Go to praying. Bind that lying devil in the work that he wants to do and tell him to take a hike. And just take dominion over it. Be protected. Because you have that power in your mouth, in your tongue. We don't have to be like the world who works their whole life and gives everything to be successful, to gain wealth and riches and loses basically their own soul and their own life. We don't have to be like that and then be fearful of losing what they have all the time, always living in fear and misery and torment because we have power and authority with God. And we don't have to be fearful. We take those imaginations, those things that the enemy would breathe at us, and we bring them into captivity. We cast them down. We cast down the imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Where's the knowledge of God? So, when the enemy says, you're sick, by his stripes I was healed. 1 Peter 2, 24. When the enemy says, whatever, you quote the word of God. That's what Jesus did. We have, we have his example to follow. Luke chapter 4, go there. Not right now. Write it down. Go there later. Because if we go there, I'll never get through with this. But Jesus spoke the word back every time Satan twisted the word of God and tried to impart his stupidity. Jesus clarified it with the word of God. That's what we're to do. That's the knowledge of God. We're to bring every thought into this knowledge of God while we're waiting on Jesus to come at any moment. <laughs> oh. Comfort one another with these words. Get excited about Jesus is coming soon, and we want to take as many people to heaven with us as we can because Jesus is coming. He's coming soon. And this is why we want to give all diligence to make our calling and election sure. Hallelujah. All diligence. This is, this is uh, more discipline in surrendering your life to God and keeping it there than any military. But yet, it is the easiest thing to accomplish than any mil military exercise because we got the Holy Ghost and He just, <laughs> as we just give ourselves to Him and He takes us over, we just jump on over into the realms of glory. So when you look at this and you look at the Word and you're just like, Lord, how do I do that? You say, Father, baptize me in the fire of your Holy Ghost. Amen. Overwhelm me and fill me up. And then this, the word just jumps into you and it's illuminated by the Holy Ghost because it's spirit and it's life. It's a living word. This is the living word of God and the spirit brings the life. That's why Jesus said, I got to hurry to the Father. You don't understand. I got to get there. I got to get there so I can send the Holy Ghost. Because when He comes, He will show you all things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And He's showing us some stuff tonight. He's showing us how to walk with Him <laughs> Woo, forever and ever. Whoo, Jesus. <laughs> I might have my own private rapture. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and bringing into captivity. So what do we do with those assailing thoughts that come against our mind? They're not ours. Recognize that in the first place. 
They're not yours. They don't belong to you. Capture them. Take a hold of them. By the word of God. And bring them into captivity. And refuse to let them play in your mind. See, that is where people make a mistake. They even subconsciously let thoughts play in their mind. You want to check your thought life. You want to be aware and guard. Guard your thought life. Guard your pattern of thinking. Guard the things. If repetitively over and over and over you're dealing with the same thoughts and it seems like it's going on and on, it's probably because you at some play, point have given place to it and not realizing that you've got to bring those thoughts into captivity. You've given place to them over and over again. And then that's why you find yourself back in that same situation and you, you're wrestling with the thing is because you've let the thoughts play in your mind. So it can come, become a stronghold in your life. And it can go to the place that it takes you down. So what you want to do is you want to understand the word of God and what to do with thoughts and how to sort them out and how to lay them out and how to, how to keep them in the things of God. But if you've got these things that continually take you down, you may just need to spend some time fasting and praying and saying, okay, Lord, I, I, I'm not having this anymore. I'm moving past this. I'm going you know, and it, some people, you know, maybe you can't fast 40 days. Maybe you can't fast one day. What you can do is you can separate yourself to prayer and seeking God, getting on your face, praying in the Holy Ghost. Sometimes I do better if I go and eat something, you know. I can't just fast because I think it's a good idea. I have to fast because it's a divine fast and God's calling me to fast. Because otherwise, I get hungry, and I get so hungry that I'd be better off just to go eat something instead of being on my knees trying to figure out how long it's going to be before I'm eating something because I'm so hungry. <laughs> so I found that out a long time ago. If it's like that, just, just go eat and then go back and pray. Just separate yourself to the time of getting before the Lord to break that thing down to where you have, you have dominion over it, and then... From that point on, be aware and bring that thought into captivity unto the obedience of Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. And I read all of that. <clears throat> I'm going to go through a, a few things here. Psalms 119, 113. <clears throat> I hate vain thoughts, but thy law do I love. I hate vain, empty thoughts, things that will amount to nothing. Things that in eternity will mean nothing. They're empty. You know, Solomon um, said, uh, I found that all is vanity. Vanity, vanity, all is vanity under the sun. Because if it's not to do with God, if it's not to do with the law of the Lord, it is vanity because it will come to an end. So, you, so the thoughts that you think, you don't want them to be vain. You don't want to be imagining a friend that is not there. And you don't want to be setting a place for them at the table. Not for you, nor your child. Because people, that is just out of it. Out of it. How precious also, Psalms 139, verse 17. How precious also are your thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. And then Psalms 139, 23. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. So that's where, you know, at, at nighttime, a lot of times, um, the Lord will wake me up in the middle of the night, and I think that that's a good searching time because you're still, you're quiet. Nobody's ringing my phone. Nobody's texting to me. Nobody's sending me an email. Nobody's hollering, Mom or Nani. That's what my grandkids call me, Nani. And nobody needs anything. My husband isn't interrupting me. It's just quiet. And that's a good time for me to say, Father, just turn your, your searchlight on me. I used to not like to wake up in the middle of the night. Now I think it's a wonderful time to have fellowship with God. I used to say, you know, I wake up in the night or couldn't go to sleep after a revival meeting. I'm like, oh, Lord, i got to get some sleep, you know. But the glory of God be on you so strong you can't go to sleep, huh, Brad? <laughs> uh, 
And I just like, oh, Lord, I got to get some sleep. But now I just go, no, I'll just stay here. I'll just stay in the glory. Forget it. I don't care. I'll stay in the glory. Get some sleep later. <laughs> if the Lord's going to talk to me, I'll just be in the glory. So in the middle of the night, I mean, I used to like, if I woke up in the middle of the night, I was like, oh, no, the glory's going to come, and I'm not going to be able to go back to sleep. But now I'm just like, Lord, your glory, the glory of your presence. Oh, Father, burn me up with the fire of your glory. And I mean, there's times I could just rapture on over. You know, and I'll, and I'll still be half asleep sometimes. I got, I, and the next thing I know, I realize my hands are in the air. And you know, I'm laying in bed, my hands are in the air. I'm just worshiping the Lord. Ah, it's so glorious. I'm having a good time whether you are or not. <laughs> Oh, praise you, Jesus. <laughs> uh, Proverbs 12, 5. The thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsels of the wicked are deceit. So our thoughts are right. They're righteous. If we're righteous, then we have righteous thoughts. Amen? Amen. Okay? Not that the enemy cannot, and I want to make that clear because people wrestle a lot with their stinking thinking. And we got to get right thinking. We don't want stinking thinking. We want right thinking. You know, the Lord gives me little things like that so people remember. St no stinking thinking today. No stinking thinking. I'm not going to have stinking thinking. I'm going to know my thoughts. I'm going to hold them before the Lord. I'm going to let them be weighed in the balance of the Almighty. And I'm going to gird up those thoughts today. And I'm going to make sure that they're all righteous, true, and holy before the Lord. And so... Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so then we live rejoicing. And then we stay in Psalms. <laughs> Chapter 1. We stay there where we're meditating on the law of the Lord day and night. And then we'll be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of living water. That's verse 3. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Planted. Planted in the Lord. Psalms, I mean, uh, Isaiah, verse, uh, Isaiah 55, verse 7. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, and he will abundantly pardon. If you have had wicked thoughts and you've lived and dwelled in wicked thoughts and it's brought you over into wicked thoughts, then forsake your ways. And the Lord, look at his mercy. He will abundantly pardon. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Now, the thing is, is Jesus knows your thoughts. Matthew 9, 4. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore do you think evil in your thoughts? You're not going to get away with anything that Jesus doesn't know about. Jesus knows about it. He knows what you're thinking. For out of the abundance of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornication, thefts, false witnesses, blasphemies. Okay, so that's out of the abundance of the heart, and it starts with the thought. It starts with your thoughts. And, you know, we're going over this. The Lord has us going over this tonight because there needs to be a change. And I heard the Lord tell me this today. There needs to be a change in the thoughts. Because people keep getting themselves in the same situation because of the thought pattern that they've continued to allow in their life and you don't realize it. We don't want to be deceived. We do not want Satan to deceive us. We want to gird up those thoughts that bring us into that place of discouragement again, of disappointment again, of whatever, of sin, of ungodliness, of fear. We want those thoughts girded up Father knows what we're thinking, and we want our heart to be pure and holy before him at all times. And so, therefore, our thoughts must continually, you know, the thoughts of having an attitude against someone else, that doesn't line up with the Word of God. That isn't the Word of God. That somebody did me wrong song, that whole thing. We don't want that because we're to bless those that curse us. We're to do good. We're to feed our enemy. Bless, bless, bless. That's God. 
That's who God is. So our thoughts shouldn't be of how we can get back at whoever. And not even realizing it. People, people don't even realize it, but the word of God is quick and it's powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing and, uh, um, and dividing asunder the soul and the spirit and of the joints and the marrow. And it's a discerner of the thoughts and the intent of the heart. So we say, Holy Spirit, discern all my thoughts and let them be only in you at every moment, at every moment that I will gird up the loins of my mind. First Peter 1 Peter 1.13, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope unto the end, for the grace that is, in, that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And then Isaiah 26.3, He will keep, him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him because he trusts in him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And, you know, we could, we could go on from here and go into, um, into Ephesians chapter 6, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And we could, we could just teach about the whole armor of God, but that's a whole other message. It would take me at least another hour. Let's go. <laughs> well, we got one. But, um, you know, Father just wants us to be so standing on the edge, cutting edge people, standing in his glory and in his righteousness, waiting every moment for his appearing, looking, looking for Jesus to come at any moment. You know, if you knew that Jesus was coming, or that your life would end in the next 12 months. Think about how you would spend those 12 months. You've got 12 months left upon this earth. How would you spend those days? Would those days be spent different than they are now? Would you want to be laying up treasures in heaven? Would you want to be preparing yourself for eternity for when you stood before him, thinking continually every moment, I am getting ready to stand before him, and countdown has started. It has started. What is he going to say when I stand before him? Oh, God, that you would say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Just think about that. Take that. Are you ready to meet him? If it was tomorrow, and if you had 12 months, what would you do every day different than what you're doing now? I say that we should look for him to that point that he is coming tomorrow and prepare the next 12 months that he, like he is coming because he very could well be. The way things are, he could very well be. He could split that eastern sky at any moment. Will you stand with me? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If there's anybody in this place that is not ready to meet Jesus, if you don't know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're ready to meet Jesus, I want to give you the opportunity to come and ask Jesus to come into your life and to change your life and transform you and bring you on over into the realms of glory to baptize you in the fire of the Holy Ghost. If there's anybody in this place that has known God but you have not walked with God, I want to give you the opportunity to come home tonight to ask God to forgive you for playing around on Him and to come to Him, to serve Him for the rest of your days with all of your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. It, any need, if you've been battling with thoughts and you haven't known how to deal with them, I'll pray with you. There is an anointing by the laying on of hands, and we'll be glad to pray with you tonight and see the chains broken off of you. If there's a stronghold because you've allowed too much of the stuff going on, God will break that thing for you tonight. If you've got a demon living on the inside of you, we can take care of that too. We can cast them out because we have authority through the Word and in the name of Jesus. If you're sick, if you have need of anything, we want you to come to Jesus tonight. We want him to meet your need. He is here to meet your need. You just have to do your part to participate and say, I'm coming. I'm coming to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So if there's anybody that wants prayer for any reason, any of the things I said or any of the things that I didn't say, that uh, 
you have need of, we will be glad to pray for you tonight. So right now, as Emily plays the piano, <laughs> this anointed woman of God that just loves Jesus so much, as she worships the Lord on the piano or organ or well, keyboard or whatever it is, come, 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 come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You don't want to leave here tonight not knowing where you're going. You do not want to leave here tonight. This is your opportunity. You may never have this opportunity again. You don't know. You don't know what tomorrow holds, people. You really want to be honest and open with yourself. You really want to take a hold of the awesome mightiness of the almighty God and who he is and allow the fear of the Lord to change your life, to give you a reality of who he is. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We're going to wait just a couple more minutes because I know that the Lord was dealing with some hearts here tonight. He was dealing with some people. He was giving some people some opportunity to come to Jesus, to come to him. Or we might have just had a glory shout-down meeting all night. But God was dealing with some hearts. You don't want to hold on to intellect, to your, your knowledge, what you think about it. You want to hold on to what God says, and you want to run after him right now in Jesus' name.